Hey guys, this is Shannon with Black Sheep House. Today's video, I really wanted to share with you guys things that I feel have really elevated and helped me evolve in my furniture refinishing. And I just thought that it might help somebody. Again, these are just things that have worked for me personally and there's many ways to do things. Uh, I just wanted to share for me what has worked and I thought that it might help people who are trying to get better at furniture refinishing either for their own homes or for a side hustle or even a full blown business like I have. Uh, one of the first things that has really helped me is just getting better at acquiring furniture. And I have found that Facebook Marketplace particularly on the weekends is the best place to find really high quality furniture for a, a decent price, you know, somewhere between 50 and, and $150 for a nice dresser is uh, reasonable. And I also find that paying a little bit more for furniture uh, saves me a many hours and sometimes days of repairs and costly supplies. And we all know that the prices of supplies are going up. So it is something to consider as much as I love a passion project and I love finding something on the side of the road. These days I find that for my business and for my own home as well, paying a little bit more for something is really paying off for me. The other places that I find furniture would be Habitat for Humanity, the Habitat Restore, I think it's called, and then also Goodwill. Um, I tend to go only to Goodwill if the parking lot is uh, not full. If, if the parking lot is full at Goodwill, chances are there isn't going to be a ton of great items. You may find that different, but I have found in my area, it also helps to go to different Goodwills because there's one Goodwill that is on the left of me that is really overpriced and they don't move their inventory very often. And then I have a Goodwill to the right that is you know, constantly moving inventory and the prices are really much better. So just you know, be willing to be bop around town and try out your local thrift stores and see which one is best for you. There's also a place in Atlanta, and I live in the North Atlanta suburbs, there's a place called um, Fur Kids that is also really a great place to get stuff, especially when they mark things down. And um, all the proceeds from that actually go to rehoming animals, which I love that. <laughs> so I do try to go there as often as I can. The other thing that has really helped in my personal design style, as well as my furniture refinishing business, is picking a few designers to mimic. And so I'll follow McGee & Co. I follow um, Amber Interiors. And of course, Pottery Barn, Ballards are really great to follow. And these people just inspire me with their decor. And so I've, I just try to mimic what I see them putting in their spaces. And that has really worked well for me. The customers really come flooding in uh, for that neutral stuff for me. That has worked really well. And then that's also what's been working really well when I'm working with the local decorators and designers is just if I'm mimicking what those designers are putting in their spaces and then I'm working with the designer and or decorator that does that a similar style as well, then we're just this one, you know, happy cohabitating uh, partnership and it's just really cool. So that has really worked well for me uh, in my furniture refinishing journey. All right, so this other thing that really helped me a ton in my furniture refinishing is switching over to a brush and then roll method. And so that has really been, and it's a hallmark of this channel, I pretty much do it on every piece. That has really helped me. My husband and I, like I said, we did this, and oh my gosh, we would be out spraying in the heat of Georgia, <laughs> just spraying, he was, it was really him, he was doing most of the spraying. We kind of did like a, a team effort, and I won't go into all the details of that, but, 
Uh, he did a lot of spraying and we did a gravity fed uh, sprayer that Jamie Ray Vintage had recommended on her YouTube. And it worked really great. It was like $15, use it with an air compressor, you mix up the paint and stuff like that. And it's a really great way to refinish furniture and, and it, had, it gave a great finish. But it was not very enjoyable working conditions for me personally. So I did not like spraying and um, so I switched over, I figured out this method that worked and um, I've been doing it ever since. The, the other thing that's great too about the enamel paint is it levels pretty well and so does the fusion mineral paint. My one step paint recipe, if you add chalk powder to it, it doesn't level as well, but if you just do you know, the paint primer clear coat thing, um, it levels pretty well. And you, there are additives that you can certainly use to make your paint level a little bit more even, but I have found that that method works really well for me and I've been doing it for so long now that I'm just really good at it. And so that's kind of what I'll be doing for until the foreseeable future. <laughs> One of the really big things that has helped me so much in my furniture refinishing is being able to do forgiving finishes like my Pottery Barn style, Sausalito hack and using the broom and stuff like that. Up until that point, so my husband and I used to do this business full time together while he was out of work for a while. And um, until we came up with that finish, we were spending hours and hours and hours on uh, pieces of furniture and number one they weren't selling for as much as they do now that i do the pottery barn finish and number two they were taking so much longer because we were doing all the repairs and stuff so having a flaw hiding forgiving finish is really helpful the other thing that's so great about doing the pottery barn finish is that you can do a color and, and you can test out different colors and decide which one you want or you can just do exactly what I do in the video. You can create that color every single time. The ability to create an exact color is really helpful. They like that a lot, knowing exactly what they're going to get versus, well, I don't know because it depends on the wood and then the stain is acting funny. One time I spent, oh my gosh, it, I worked all Thanksgiving, okay? Like I, I worked the whole Thanksgiving break. My kids were home. I was slaving away trying to get this really specific color on um, a buffet and I never got it, okay? I worked and worked and worked. I did everything, but it was just, it was different woods and different. <laughs> so anyway, I worked all of that Thanksgiving and I never even got the color right for the client and it was just such a disaster, but an eye-opening moment where I just thought there's gotta be a better way. And so that's where these faux wood finishes came in is just being able to deliver an exact color. I'm good enough now that I have a better idea of what is going to happen with certain types of woods. And I've also gotten better at doing staining and, and things like that. So, you know, nowadays I can come up with a pretty good color uh, for what the, the person is asking for, or what I'm shooting for. Um Checking the dimensions has really helped me in my business. Just making sure that I'm selling the types of sizes of dressers and things that people are shooting for. So if I have a really short dresser, I'm going to market that as a TV stand. And I love vintage furniture, but it is shorter and it's something to keep in mind. I wondered in the past, like, why isn't this thing selling, you know? And it turned out, oh, it's because it's like a really short dresser uh, because vintage dressers uh, tend to be on the shorter side. Um, something to consider when you see an item maybe is not selling as quickly and you'll know whether or not, hey, do I wanna you know, buy something that short in the future? Another thing that has really helped my furniture refinishing is upgrading the hardware and or changing it out you know i love vintage hardware and there's a lot of it that is considered uh trendy right now like the heppel white styles or the ring pulls or 
you know, the French hardware is a classic one, but one that seems to not sell for me at all right now is like a bat wing pole. It kind of looks like a little bat. Those don't sell for me at all. And so, uh, or if they do, it takes forever and I have to drop the price on the dresser. So I get a lot more for the dresser if I change out the hardware to something that is just currently in demand. And that has helped my business a lot. I used to, oh my gosh, we used to clean the hardware, like those bat wing poles. I've cleaned so many of those and um, I got really good at it, you know, and I had no idea that that was the reason why the piece wasn't selling. The other thing is um, tall dressers sell slower for me personally than the wide dressers do. So that's just something that has I've noticed. Let's talk about paint. So something that has helped me tremendously is just finding what paints work really well for me. And for, for me and my business, these are the paints that I recommend. Um, Fusion Mineral Paint is great. And I know many furniture refinishers, professionals that I admire and friends of mine that exclusively use Fusion Mineral Paint. And it's a really great product. Uh, it's a little bit pricier than say, you know, hardware store paint, but it is a really great product. And I, I would definitely, I'm not sponsored or anything, I don't sell it. Uh, I just think it's it's really great paint. Especially if you're newer, uh, it has a far less, um, it's a, a quick dry time, quick cure time, and they tend to sell trending colors. So you, you know, you can't go wrong with color choices. But I started making my own one step paint recipe with with oops paint and paints that I could find at the hardware store and that has been great and saves me a ton of money when I can use that and then the other paint that I've really fallen in love with is um, the Valspar furniture and cabinet enamel and I think just enamel paints in general are going to be stronger um, that particular one is oil enriched and so it would be suitable for cabinets and bathroom vanities and areas that are tables and um, table, you know, chair legs and things like that that are gonna get a lot of abuse. And I didn't really like the sheen of it. It was too shiny for me. Um, but I started adding matte clear coat in with it and you guys can see that on the channel and that has really helped there. So those are sort of my current paint recommendations. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you guys have a paint that you just absolutely love or paint brand you want to give a shout out to because I am always trying new things and I'm always curious and and I am a forever student I will always just try new things and and do things um try things I <laughs> just try things <laughs> your lighting matters so so much more than any staging you could ever do your lighting really matters uh if you can't take it outside and put it, you know, in front of the garage for a picture, at least put it by a, I typically put mine by a window. So the window, like let's say this is the window and this is my piece of furniture and that's how I stage it. So the light is coming in and then I'll just check throughout the day and it changes as the year goes too, like which time of day is best for pictures. And if you want, you can just put it there and take pictures of it in the morning, take pictures of it in the afternoon, and take pictures of it in the evening and see which one you like best. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, just trying a couple different things helps. Staging the dresser, I will typically just copy what I see Pottery Barn doing. <laughs> you know, a couple books, a little bit of greenery, a lamp or maybe a bouquet of flowers. Eucalyptus is such a great way to stage too. Eucalyptus looks good with any decor style I find, especially that like floppy silver dollar eucalyptus from Trader Joe's, that's such a good one. And I just did this this year when we moved, I got some boxes of um, like click together flooring panels and I flipped them upside down and so they were dark wood on one side. I had no idea when I bought them. 
Um, they were dark wood on one side and then I flipped them over to the light wood side and the light wood seems to be much more desirable these days. So you can find it at Lowe's or Home Depot if you just wanna buy a couple of boxes or maybe you get lucky like me and you can flip your click together wood pieces over and have that light wood showing. Okay, I hope that that was not too much rambling and that you actually got something out of it. <laughs> but make sure to comment below if you have a favorite paint that you love using, or actually, you know what would be even better in the comments is if you put in there what you feel like has helped you level up your furniture finishing game. You know, what was that one thing that just took you to the next level? Because I'm sure there'll be people reading through the comments and learning from you. Um, the other thing is in the uh, pinned comment of this video, I'm going to put the winners of the contest who got the, um, the sticky stencil from the Cricut video. So uh, look down there, you can see if you are one of the winners. And if so, email me. And I will see you guys in the next video.